Hi, this is Chris Munn from Highline Guitars, and you're watching episode 49 of From the Luthier's Workbench. In this episode, I'm going to be covering the fourth and final part in my series about how I design a guitar and prepare the files for CNC. And what I'll be uh, focusing on specifically is how I do the guitar body. So I've got the computer all fired up and ready to go, so let's jump on here and I'll show you that process. The first step in preparing files for CNC is I need to do a full-size, full-scale, top-down view of my guitar body. And I use Adobe Illustrator, but you can use any vector-based drawing program or a CAD program, just as long as whatever you're using can work in full-size, full-scale, and is accurate to around a thousandth of an inch. Now I've completed this drawing, but I, it, it's all done in layers, which you can see here on the right side of the um, window, and I have those layers turned off. But this white box in the center represents the blank that I'm going to be cutting the body out of. And this blank is uh, 14 inches wide, 18 inches long. And as I said before, it's, it's set, the file is set up in layers so that I can uh, see each separate part that I'm going to be uh, cutting. And that'll make sense here in a second. Uh, the first layer is going to be the front of the guitar body. And as you can see, that consists of the neck pocket, the pickup pockets, which also includes the channels for the wiring. And then this is the inner uh, perimeter shape of the control cavity. Now when I build a guitar, I make a body and then I make a separate top. That way the top is covering the wiring channel. If I'm going to make it out of one piece, then I would have to drill from the neck pocket all the way through and then from the um, uh, bridge pickup pocket down into the control cavity. But if, in this case, I'm going to be doing a book match decorative top, so I'll put that over the, uh, the body to cover up those, those wiring channels. And what that file looks like is this. It consists of the outer perimeter shape of the body, including the neck pocket, both the pickup pockets, and then holes for the controls, which in this case will be a volume, a tone, and a three-way switch. Then I have the back of the guitar body. And this consists of, again, the outer perimeter shape of the body, and then this shape here, these two lines here, this represents the recessed shelf that the control cavity cover will fit into. When I CNC route this, it's going to cut out the space between those two lines. And then down here, I have another shape, which is also recessed into the body. And that's where I place a medallion that includes the logo and serial number of the guitar. Up here, you'll see these five circles. Those represent shallow holes which will hold the uh, ferrules for the neck bolts. They're recessed into the body. Now if you're an astute observer, you'll notice that the control cavity has suddenly jumped from the right side of the drawing to the left side. This is what I mean. See over here on the front of the body it's on the uh, right side, but then on the back it's on the left side. The reason for that is because after I've routed the front, I have to flip the blank over on the CNC machine to route the back. So everything has to be flipped horizontally in order for the, every, all the, the routing on one side to match up with the routing on the other side. And to do that, it is critical that everything lines up perfectly. So what I use is a what I call a pin alignment system, and that's the final layer in this drawing here you'll see there are four holes, one in each corner. Those holes correspond to holes that are drilled in the wasteboard of my CNC machine, and that's where I place steel pens that I use to line up the blank. So I can place the blank on those uh, steel pins, and then I can go back in and route the front. And when I'm done, I can flip the blank over, line it up on those pin holes, and route the back, and everything will line up. Now you could uh, use uh, measurements to, to try to line up the front with the back, but if you're off by you know as little as a sixteenth or a thirty-second of an inch, things could get way off 
in terms of alignment from the front to the back. So it's a good idea to use a pin alignment system to keep everything uh, nice and accurate. So at this stage, what I'm going to do is save out each one of these layers as a .svg file. And a .svg file stands for Scalable Vector Graphic. And the reason I have to use Scalable Vector Graphic is because in the next program that I'm going to use, uh, it, it only can import the, the SVG format. The next program in my CNC workflow for the guitar body is Easel, which is uh, from the company Inventables. And Inventables makes the XCAR CNC machine that I use. Their program Easel is a web-based program that is great for doing basic two-dimensional type cuts. That's what this guitar body is. It's basically a two-dimensional series of cuts. There aren't any um, 3D curves in this guitar body, so I don't need to use a more elaborate workflow to generate those tool paths. Instead, I can just use a very simple two-dimensional tool path solution. If I were doing a carved top, then I would have to do that. But since this is just a basic flat top guitar body, I can stick with easel. And when I launch easel, what I get is a window that is split in two. On the left side is the workspace, and this is where I place all the elements uh, for the drawings that will be converted into tool paths. And then on the right side, we have a window which shows the work in 3D. Also on the left side or on the right side, I can select material. And I don't have a lot of choices here, but what I typically do is I'll pick a, a material that's similar to what I'm going to be using. When you're cutting in hardwood, it, the settings really don't need to change all that much from one species to the next. It's all basically the same. Then I can choose the bit size that I'm going to use. And when I'm carving uh, a guitar body, I generally use a quarter inch size bit, although you know that, that can depend on the size of some of the routing that I'm going to do. But in this case, it's mostly done with a quarter inch. And then I can set my um, feed rate, my plunge rate, depth per pass. I can do custom settings, and oftentimes I'll do about 100 inches per minute. Um, I'll leave the plunge rate the same and then I'll take the depth per pass up to about a sixteenth of an inch. Then I can set my material dimensions which have to match the size of the blank. So in this case it's going to be uh, 14 inches wide and then 18 inches long and then for the depth Overall, the depth of the guitar is going to be one and three quarter inches, but if I subtract a quarter inch from the top, that leaves me with a one and a half inch blank. And that's what we get. You can see that down in the window. Then what I do is I will create files for each one of those separate cuts, the front, the back, the top, and the pinholes. And I've already done that, so let me just show you what those files look like. This is what my pinholes are going to look like. Uh, typically I uh, will drill these just part way through the wood. I don't go all the way through because it isn't necessary. So I have to do the pinholes on one side, flip the body over, and then uh, route the pinholes on the other side. And this is the only file I think that uses an eighth inch drill bit and slightly different settings. But I can click simulate and then down here you can see, I don't know, it may be kind of hard to see, there's blue marks which show the movement of the router uh, as it drills the hole. Then these red lines represent the rapid moves of the router from one hole to the next. After I've drilled the pinholes, I can then place the blank onto the, the steel pins and I can start by routing. Now the order in which I route, I can route it in any order. It's just... Um, you know, it doesn't really matter that much. And in this case, I did as my second file, the back. And this is kind of what the back looks like. 
these lines, which are gray, um, they represent, like in this case, the outer, outer perimeter of the body is an outline. It's only going to cut to a depth of a quarter of an inch. Now, this is where you have to decide what you're going to do with CNC and what you're going to do with uh, traditional hand building techniques. Because um, while CNC does all this stuff very accurately and does a great job at it and re relatively quickly, there are some things that you can do faster using traditional methods than you can with CNC, and one of those is to cut out the perimeter shape of the body. I can whip that out on a bandsaw in just a few minutes, whereas with the CNC machine, it could take you know 30 minutes to cut out the body shape. So I just cut it a quarter of an inch deep around the perimeter. Later on, I'll come back and I'll cut out that shape of my bandsaw because it will be faster. These other shapes are cut to different, different depths depending on um, what I need them to be. And this is how I did that shelf. This white shape in the center is ignored and then the shape, um, this is done as a fill underneath it so that all, you see, all that's being routed is that gray area in between those two shapes. And then of course this is where my medallion goes. And all of them have a different uh, depth of cut. But I can zoom in here and do a simulate and it will show me not only how the router is going to move and cut, but it'll tell me that to cut this shape with the settings that I'm currently using is going to take about six minutes. So that's pretty quick. The next shape, or the next file that I have to do, is the front. And as you can see, it's all it's you know a little bit different than the other shapes on the other file. Uh, the gray is different because um, it's a different depth. So the lighter the shade of gray, the shallower the cut. So that's how this one looks. And again, I can zoom in and do simulate, and it'll show me how it's going to cut it out. And then after I've done this shape, I can then do the top. And the top is a little different. I've set this up to be on maple because typically I'm doing my tops out of like a flame maple or quilted maple. Uh, sometimes I use walnut, but in this case I would use a maple. And the board is only, it's about a quarter of an inch thick, a little bit more. What I do is I prepare my blank first and when it's ready to cut I measure the thickness and that's what I set up the file to be. So you can see here, um, that's what it's going to look like when it's cut out. And again, I'm using a two-button mouse here, so I can use one button to move one way, the other button to move the other way. And you can see there are tabs on this view, which correspond to the tabs in the work that you see, these, these little yellow hash marks. Those are there to keep the, you know, the internal parts from flying around once the router has cut all the way through. It's sort of like building a model, a plastic model. Once this is finished, I then clip these tabs to re um, remove the centerpiece from the, the blank. So I can hit simulate and that will show me how this is going to cut out. So that's basically my workflow for doing a simple two-dimensional uh, body. Again, to do something more complex like a carved top requires uh, the same kind of processes that I showed in part three where I cut the neck contour. So that's how I would do a, a carved top. So uh, that basically covers it. Well, that concludes this episode of From the Luthier's Workbench. And it's the end of this four-part series that I did on designing a guitar and preparing the files for CNC. Now I realized that this wasn't the end-all tutorial about how I use each uh, software program in the process. Uh, to do that uh, would require hours and hours of my time and probably the same amount for you. It's extremely detailed and it's, it's complex. Uh, but what my goal was really was to educate and enlighten you as to what goes on before I even start building a guitar. There are a lot of skeptics out there who think for some reason that CNC is cheating. And I've never understood that because 
really what you're doing is you're trading some of your hand building skills for computer skills and anyone out there who's attempted this knows just how hard and difficult this is but I think one of the reasons why uh, folks tend especially the traditionalists tend to look down at CNC is because there are a lot of CNC guitars out there that are not very good quality and I think what that um, where that's coming from is the fact that a lot of those guitars are being made by people who on the back end just don't pay any attention to those critical details. It Really what it comes down to is what, what you get out of it is what you put into it. So if you want quality and craftsmanship, you have to put a tremendous amount of work uh, on the back end before you can even head out to the shop and fire up the CNC machine. So I hope that, that you know, I've gone to uh, the extent necessary to help explain that to some of you and, and maybe will persuade some of the skeptics to rethink this pr uh, process. And I hope that those of you who are thinking about it and, and maybe considering buying a CNC machine will understand just how much work is going to go into the back end. You're going to have a, a fairly steep learning curve to get through to get to this point. So uh, with that, I'm going to finish off this episode and get back to work. And I'm not sure what episode 50 is going to be about, but I'm sure will be something incredibly exciting and interesting and fascinating. So until then, take care.